In this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over the four laws of thermodynamics. Now, what's interesting, there is a zeroth law. So even though you only see three here listed, there are four in total. Hopefully, I'll be able to describe them in a little bit more detail coming up. All right, so let's get into the laws of thermodynamics. Now there is a zeroth law which has to do with temperature where two systems in equilibrium with a third system are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So it's revolving around the concept of temperature. The first law you might be familiar with, it's called the conservation of energy, where energy can change forms but can neither be created or destroyed, looking at total energy. Second law is looking at entropy of an isolated system always increases, moving heat flow from hot areas to cold areas. And a third law has to do with entropy of a system approach approaching a constant as temperature approaches absolute zero. As a reminder, that's where mole molecular movement stops. So let's break these down a little bit more uh, detail here. The zeroth law, if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This establishes the concept of temperature, allowing it to be measured and compared across different systems. Essentially, this ensures that temperature is constant tran transitive property. You can kind of see that here with an uh, insulator versus a conductor. If two thermodynamic systems are in equilibrium, where essentially Q would equal zero, with a third, then the two are in equilibrium with each other. We're having that kind of conductor and that transfer bit of uh, energy there uh, from one system to another. That's the zeroth law. Now, starting with the first law, which is the second one in our group of four that I'll cover in this video. The first law is the law's con law of energy conservation, which again, you might be familiar with because energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or converted from one form to another. The change in the internal energy of a system is represented by this delta Q, change in internal uh, energy. This equals the heat added represented by the letter Q here, and that's the heat added to the system, subtracted or minus from the work done by the system represented by W. So Q minus W equals delta U, which the delta, as a reminder, stands for change in. So the change in the energy is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. We kind of see a visual representation here where the change of the internal energy, a delta U, of a system equals to the heat added to the system minus the work done. So here we're seeing in comparison with a gas being a basically compressed at one point and then released, we're seeing that first law in thermodynamics where law of energy conservation. Now the second law involves this concept of entropy. And this is an isolated system. Entropy, which is related to disorder, tends to increase over time. I mean, those things like to stay organized and then over time things start to want to naturally spread out. Energy transformations are not 100% efficient and some energy is always lost as unstable heat. So again, when we say energy is lost, it doesn't mean we don't know where it went. It means it's lost in an unusable form of energy. This implies that natural processes are irreversible and favor increasing disorder unless an external work is done. You can relate this to kind of like your room or your desk or your locker. Maybe that tends to have a tendency to get more disorganized unless you put the time in to get everything well organized. We could see the example here of entropy in any natural and spontaneous process either increases or remains constant. The example is heat flow from a hot body to a cold body. That's the natural progression of our heat energy. And if the delta S, which is a change in entropy, uh, equals zero for a, re a reversible process, and if delta S or the change in entropy is greater than zero, it's considered to be an irreversible process. Lastly here, our third law, I remember this is our fourth in total because we're counting at zeroth. Uh, third law is as temperature of a system approaches absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin, the entropy is a perfect crystalline approaches zero as well. So when we're trying to get to molecules that are moving, this means that at absolute zero, see here, a perfectly ordered system has no randomness providing a reference point to measure entropy from. So when are things perfectly organized? Well, when basically everything stops moving, you get that crystalline structure. Up until that point, even at the very cold temperatures, there's still some movement going on. So that's the third law, and that's four in total. Hopefully that gives a little bit of background on each of them for you.